is Zia Chowdhury and Eddie Hurst. Our next story now is about the lawyers of the families of the football fans who died in the Hillsborough disaster. And they are pursuing High Court misconduct action now against the South Yorkshire and West Midlands police forces. The inquest jury found the 96 victims of Hillsborough were unlawfully killed and that there were police failings. Legal action began in 2015 but was suspended pending the conclusions of this inquest. The officers are accused of spreading lies, doctoring evidence, pressurising witnesses and suppressing the truth. Now, this is quite a bad time to be a police officer, isn't it, Eddie? Um, I'm not sure if it's a bad time to be a police officer in general. I mean, it's certainly a bad time to be a South Yorkshire police officer who was involved in the Hillsborough disaster in any way, shape or form. Um, well, not even that, actually. Some, you know, some of them didn't know. But it's been something, it's happened, the truth's come out, or a decision has been made based on evidence that has been a long time coming. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's good news that people know. It's good news that action's being taken. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, probably the... Prob I mean, great news for the families. But also, isn't it... Nick Clegg got, got to feel a bit relevant again as well. So that's a treat for him too. Yeah, he's back in the news. Uh, Zia, um, I don't know if uh, your judgment will be different because you are a Liverpool supporter. But um, 27 years is a long time to wait for uh, the truth. Uh, 27 years is a long time for lies to finally come out in the open. Yeah, I mean, I lived in Liverpool for 40 odd years and so I've lived through this. There are obviously friends and colleagues who were affected, but that figure, 27 years, you can only sometimes stop and think, what, how would I react? You know, would I be as dignified? Would I be as persistent? Would I pursue this to the end or would I just give up? because you think you're fighting forces that are so powerful, you're never going to get to the bottom of this. And just how much as an individual can you take? And you hear the sad stories of people who did crumble under the pressure, but on the whole, you know, this perseverance for justice uh, was maintained. So that 27 year figure is, um, you know, it's, it's sobering. It's inevitable, really, that there's going to be further uh, legal proceedings once these uh, verdicts came in. That was, of course, always on the cards. And I think rightly so, because mm. the, the real, I mean, Hillsborough as an issue is what we're focusing on. But the bigger issue, in a sense, is the idea of people in power being able to get away with things and cover things up. And that's where, you know, there's this idea that there are those up there who rule and everybody else down here mm. that they don't care about. And as a, a you know, way of showing that, no, there is accountability, these matters do need to be pursued. And of course, this legal action is separate to anything possible that the Crown Prosecution Service might put forward because of the unlawful death uh, results uh, that the jury came out with. Uh, of course, we can't mention individuals, but this trust in the police um, is possibly at an all-time low now. With South Yorkshire and representatives of their police coming out today, say, be proud to be a police officer, in light of this, they're not really helping themselves out as an organisation, are they? South Yorkshire <laughs> police, I mean, you know, of all the police forces to make that comment today, that's mm. probably the one that should have really you know, invested more in their mm. PR. Uh, I think with that as well, they had an external media release and an internal release for their police officers, which got leaked. And um, it, it, it shows almost a duplicity of thoughts. Mm. And that's worrying, surely. Mm. Surely this should be a time for police to uh, come together and see the positives in their organisation and maybe work on that rather than of, of, often divisive subjects, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to see more progress or more of like, well, this has happened now, we better, better sort this out. Nope. Mm, it, it almost treat it as a, a watershed moment yeah. in history. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but um, I, I, I remember that day because my niece was born on that day, so I, I remember mm -hmm watching it and then going to the hospital. You as a Liverpool fan. I remember I was at uni that day and I was the only Liverpool fan in our house. All my, my flatmates were, you know, because in those days, you know, in the 80s, Liverpool were winning everything. So they're like United later, yeah. where there was a large body of neutrals who hated them. And so all my flatmates hated Liverpool and, uh, and you know, were ha wanting to see them lose. And then suddenly, you, you know, 
just completely overcome by this tragedy, which at the time mm. you don't understand the magnitude of, because initially you don't understand that people actually died mm. at a football match, and that slowly then begins to dawn on you. But then the 27 years that followed, uh, certainly for the families, must have been uh, heartrending. And certain individuals as well that were there on the day uh, that were possibly in command or uh, part of the rank and file of different emergency services there of the day have also come out and said they have lied. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, the fight for justice continue because the verdicts of the day aren't the end of it, are they? No, no, no not at all. One of those subjects that um, 27 years is a long time, but I think there's a little bit longer to go, sadly. Yeah. Looking at our next story now, the Royal College of Physicians report says that e-cigarettes should be wild, widely promoted as a substitute to smoking. They looked into the science of it, public policy, regulation and ethics surrounding e-cigarettes and made a series of conclusions about the devices. They say they are not a gateway into smoking, they do not normalise it and that there are key to encouraging smokers to quit. Now there's a possibility that the devices may result in some long-term harm because of the inhalation of ingredients other than nicotine, but that the harm that could be caused is substantially smaller than caused by smoking. So are you for or against the vapors, Eddie? Uh, I don't want to anger the vapor community because I know they are a fervent bunch. Uh, Can I just tell you, you used the phrase vapor community. That's really bizarre. Please go on. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's good news, isn't it? You know, hey, people should stop smoking. That's bad for you. And then there's a substitute. I think there's not a long-term study, though. You know, like when cigarettes first came out, they were said that they were great, they were healthy, and then it was only sort of 20, 30 years down the line that it turned out, oh, no, they mm. were not, don't, don't, don't smoke them. There's uh, all those adverts from the 50s, isn't there, where people are smoking and go, oh, that makes yeah. me feel good. And yeah, really, in the long term, that's not that's really no. So there's that concern, but I think ultimately, at the moment at least, it's seen as better, a better option, and yeah, good, good, on, good on you. you know. Zia, vapours, do you like them or not? Are you a vapour? No, I'm not. I'm not a smoker. I've never really even tried a cigarette. It's just never been of interest to me. So, but the idea of having this device in your mouth, I, always, I do find it funny when I see people. Mm. But if it's a, a means to an end and it's getting them off cigarettes, then of course it's a good thing. But it makes me laugh when you think about the, the years of pro-tobacco advertising. Mm. And then, of course, we realise it was really bad for us. And by us, I mean us, because it's still good to export this stuff to mm. other people around the world. And, and especially the high tar varieties that are very addictive. That's OK. But no, we've realised it's bad for us. Yeah, we've moved on, but it's still fine to, <laughs> to sell high tar cigarettes to kids Absolutely. in Asia. That's all fine. That's OK. Looking at that, though, um, the tobacco companies are huge. Uh, you know, they've got uh, decades of business behind them and now they're moving into vaping. So something like this is probably good news for them. Yeah, yeah. They've, I mean, it's, they're probably kicking themselves. They're a little late to move into it. You know, it's like, um, yeah, it's like the uh, music industry, you know, when MP3s came yeah. around and it's like, hey, you've got to try MP3s. They're healthier than vinyl. That's what everyone was saying. Mm. <laughs> Somebody's got to it first. <clears throat> yeah. Doesn't it make, I, I don't know, I've, I've never smoked myself either, uh, to, but to see people sucking on what looks like Doctor Who's sonic screwdriver <laughs> and then a cloud of cherry f smoke coming out of it, it's a really bizarre thing. And I, I'm not used to it yet. I'm, you know, I'm sort of of the attitude, bring back smoking, at least you knew what that smell was. <laughs> <laughs> now people are, are smoking things that smell like bubble gum. Am I just being a really old fuddy-duddy about this? Well, I suppose you've got, you've got the whole shisha culture and the weird and wonderful smells that that raises. But I agree, I think these devices do look bizarre. But this might just simply be the brave new world and who knows what people will have hanging out of their mouths in another 20 years' time. So. <laughs> the thing with anti-smoking, though, um, I, I think the advice a few years ago was it's to get people out of the habit of having something in their fingers, yeah. uh, taking that time out and having a break. Surely you're just substituting one... Bad habit for another. Yeah, I think, but I think that's probably why it's so successful. Is that was one of the things when people were trying to give up smoking before electric cigarettes was that it's the habit of having something in your hand that your day would become having the breaks for smoking. So, yeah, that's maybe it's moving it on, but at least it's moving it on to something slightly healthier. And do you think we'll ever get to an occasion where in 20 years' time 
more research is done into e-cigarettes that find them as harmful in different ways to people's lungs, to people's health, that we may look upon now and just go, we've made the same mistake again. <laughs> we've done it again. I think you could ever, with something like smoking, I don't think you could ever stop it overnight. So there were, it was done in stages, wasn't it? That you know you can't in public places, mm. and, so, and so then you got to the stage where you know, people huddled out, outside restaurants in the rain having a cigarette. Now, is the appeal of being huddled outside a, a restaurant with a, you know, vaping is that going to be as attractive? And in due course, is are these steps that are designed to get rid of it in the end, mm. but knowing that you can't do it overnight? And so it might well be that the, the vaping phase is is nothing more than that. But that's one of the bizarre things because a lot of places have already banned vaping and e-cigarettes mm. inside. It's not legal, yeah. but as you know, private places, they don't want people almost just turning on their little, like a shisha pipe in the middle of a restaurant and it smells a wonderful concoction of apple and banana and bubble gum and stuff. Do you think we could see more laws coming into effect soon? Um, I think you possibly could. I, I don't know, I've not found it as obnoxious as smoking though. You know, like, because yeah, it, it smells, but it smells for like, what, five seconds maybe? Whereas when, when somebody's smoking in a room with you and you're not prepared for it, it's like, well, that's, that's my hour. That's, I'm not, I've, got, I've either got to leave this room or I've got to put up with a smoke. That's me now. Whereas with this, it's like, oh, what's that? Like, what's that? orange? Oh, now it's gone. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that, we can say continue to vape. It's more than good. It's time for another break now. Next, we'll be talking about the new BBC quiz for all the family to enjoy and Ed Balls because of Ed Balls Day. Ed Balls. All in a bit on the Daily Rundown. <laughs> 